All right, well, it is 11.30 and we're gonna get started. Um, welcome to Zillow 3D Home presentation. Um, my name is Jay and I am an agent at Remax Northwest. However, I am also um, a member of I Am Third Media, which is a real estate listing marketing company, um, brand marketing, basically anything to do with real estate, um, we help you market. And with us today is Daniel Mudge from the Zillow Rich Media Experience team. And uh, without a further ado, I'm just gonna pass it along because with everything that's going on right now, it is more important than ever to be able to present your listing in a manner where um, general public is gonna be able to get as much information as possible um, without actually visiting the home. So um, without a further ado, Daniel, take it away. Yes, thank you, Jay. And a huge thank you for everyone for, you know, logging in if you're live here today or if you're going to be listening to this recording. Uh, just a huge thank you for having me and for your time. Um, kind of my goal is really just to provide help. Uh, these are uncertain times and it's really nice. I work on the Rich Media team here at Zillow. Our full-time job, and I'll kind of show you, is to create different options, products, apps that help listing agents create the most vibrant and engaging shopping experience for buyers on your listings. Today's focus, of course, is how do we do this safely? And I'm really excited to be able to, to provide an option to really help you provide a virtual open house, right? An open house that's open 24 seven that can be captured and created for free by the listing agent, by a buyer's agent, by a homeowner, if it's not you know, safe for someone to come into the house, this is really a free, fast option for anyone to quickly create a virtual tour that can still allow you know, business to operate as close as we can to normal, right? To still allow um, you know, homeowners to show off their home, for listing agents to still be talking with their clients to say, hey, I'm, I'm gonna text you a link to a virtual tour of a house that's on the market that I think would be a good, good fit for you. Um, you know, from, from my team's point of view, we wanna just provide options and tools to help during this time to, to try to keep moving forward so that uh, your business doesn't have to go completely uh, to a standstill. So right. a quick agenda for today, you guys. I wanna quickly give some of the benefits of Zillow 3D during this time of social distancing. Then I'm gonna spend the bulk of our time really going step by step on how to capture tours. Um, really with, again, the idea that anyone can capture this and that it is free to use. Um, and then lastly, there's always the question about once I have the tour, what do I do with it? So very much I wanna to finish today's time giving you instructions on how you can share these on the MLS you can share these over email and text message with any of your clients. Um, so very excited to go over this with you and we'll dive right into it. Gonna just give you some quick stats. We launched the Zillow 3D Home app in May. So it's been on the market for a little bit of time and we have some really exciting data that's been coming out so far. And I really wanna use this just to encourage you that uh, if you do start to use these 3D tours, um, home shoppers are responding incredibly well to them. Uh, Zillow did some preliminary research, just surveys to ask really what is the ideal shopping experience. And so almost half of, of home shoppers that we surveyed from the millennial buying segment, uh, again, the millennial segment being the largest home shopping group right now, um, you know, Respondents told us that they would love to see an immersive tour before visiting, that it's incredibly valuable when their agent that they're working with offers an immersive virtual tour for the listing. And probably the most important facts, right, to call out here is that when we start to look at the performance of listings that have a 3D tour added, homes with these 3D tours are receiving two times more views than homes without, 50% more saves, and then honestly, the most important factor here is they're actually selling 10% faster. So 10% fewer days on market. This is all before some of the current events. 
Um, certainly today, I think the main goal is just to allow people to see the house. Um, that's goal number one, but we are finding that engagement rates are higher and that works all the way down the funnel to actually selling the home faster. Now I mentioned millennials, right, in, in those survey results, but all generations that we surveyed, over half of buyers said that a 3D tour actually, you know, helps them experience the house better than just looking at those normal still photos. And then I wanted to just quickly share, my goal today is to give you instructions on how to use Zillow 3D tours everywhere, not just on Zillow, but to be able to share it on the MLS, to be able to share it on social media, to be able to embed it on your website, and then most importantly, right, be able to email it and text it out. But today, Zillow is the largest real estate network. Uh, I quickly like to just call out that right now we're receiving 195 million unique users that are logging in to Zillow each month. And so the goal is for you to be able to use this everywhere. But I do just want to call out that I think the most important place for your virtual tours to be is on Zillow. Right, we want to make sure as many eyeballs can get on this, um, and Zillow is, is one of the best places to have the tours posted. So, quickly, we created Zillow 3D Home to make it incredibly easy to post and publish your tours to your Zillow listing as well as use it elsewhere. Um, what I love most about this is it, it is free to use, there's no hosting fees, there's no usage fees, and the tours actually never expire. So the home is going to be on the market for a while. You don't have to worry about the tour disappearing or having to pay to keep it longer. It's 100% free for everyone to use. Um, we designed the app really with, with time sensitivity in mind. So I'll give you the instructions today, but my goal is that you can finish these tours in between 15 to 30 minutes. Certainly, the more you do, the faster you can go as you become comfortable. Then, like I said before, you know, our engagement data and, and performance data on listings so far show us that homes are selling faster because we're providing consumers with more information and a way to, to virtually tour the house. So quickly, I, I wanted to call out what Zillow does to promote the fact that you've added a, a Zillow 3D tour to the listing. Today, most of the traffic to Zillow, um, the last thing I saw, about 80% of traffic coming to Zillow is, is all mobile. So I wanted to first show you, if you're searching as a, as a shopper on Zillow looking for homes, you'll see a little badge if a home has a 3D tour, both in the search results as well as if you click onto the listing. We show similar badges for home shoppers that are using uh, a desktop or their laptop uh, to call attention to your listing if you've added a 3D tour. And then once you actually click onto the listing, we actually will embed the Zillow 3D tours as the fourth image. We make it double wide, as you can see here. So it's, it's very much above the fold. We want to draw as much attention to it as possible so that uh, you know, viewers, as they're looking through the listing photos, bump right into the 3D tour and they can immediately dive in. One of the other important parts here is since you know, we want to use these virtual tours really in lieu of, of the normal open house experience. Um, we automatically will add the listing agent's profile photo and name from your Zillow profile, and it stays in the corner. So as home shoppers navigate their way through the house, your, uh, your branding will appear in, in the corner, right? Kind of creating the experience of, you know, here's the listing, and who can I get in touch to talk more about it? Um, you know, I want to quickly share, I think, one, you know, kind of streamlined process would be that if someone's really interested in the house, after having walked through this 3D tour, they can contact you here through, and you'll see the contact agent button at the top, and then maybe you follow up by giving them a personal video tour, right? You FaceTime them and, and show them the house after they've identify through the virtual tour that this is a house that fits their needs. So let's dive into actually how to capture the tours. The name of the app is going to be Zillow 3D Home. 
with this orange uh, icon with the Zillow logo. So when you search in the App Store, search for Zillow 3D Home. I want to take a quick moment to apologize to all of my Android users. Uh, when we created this app, we uh, only had the resources to actually create it for either the iOS side or the Android side. And so we did choose to create the app first for iOS users. We have been talking a lot here at Zillow about quickly trying to roll out an Android version, especially during these times. But unfortunately, I don't have an ETA on when the Android app is going to be coming out. So my quick encouragement would be if you are an Android user, I'd reach out to family, friends, coworkers, anyone in the office, um, anyone that you can safely maybe borrow an iPhone iPhone from, that's one quick way to, to be able to, to use the app still during these times, um, as well as I'll make sure to keep ev you know, everyone updated if we do get an ETA on when the Android version is coming out. So some quick uh, just best practices and tips. Once you've downloaded the app and once you are at the listing, the best results uh, for the virtual tour come from bringing in just as much light into each of the rooms as you can. So turn on all of the lights, um, overhead lights, accent lights. If the kitchen has accent lights underneath the cabinets, you know, turn those on. Open up all of the curtains in each of the room. And then if there are televisions, fans, anything that might blur as you're capturing these uh, 360 panoramas, make sure you turn those off. Um, the other quick tip is to open up all interior doors. Uh, again, we want the virtual tour to, to be very easy to navigate. So if there's a, a bathroom across from the kitchen, make sure that door is open so that as someone's looking around the kitchen, they'll see that, hey, there's a door that leads to this other room and there's no mystery, right? What, what's behind the door? Um, so make sure all the doors in, in the house are open as you take these tours. So once you are on site at the listing, you've opened up your phone, you've downloaded the Zillow 3D app, you've set the scene right, turned on the lights, open the doors. Uh, right in the middle of the 3D app, once you open it, it'll ask you to create a 3D tour. And then the next prompt will be actually entering in the address. Um, I quickly want to call out on this page that if you have any trouble finding the address as you're entering it in, uh, you can actually add the address later. So I get a lot of agents that uh, have trouble finding the address and because they can't find the address at the beginning, they don't take the 3D tour at all. And so I don't want that to stop you. If you have any trouble finding the address, just click the add later button. And then once you get back to your home or back to the office, you can add the address later after finishing the tour. Once you've either added the address or skipped it to do it later, uh, I recommend that you start just in the front yard and then work your way through the house just in the same order that you would if you were showing someone through the home. The hey, order Daniel? Uh, yeah. just, a, just a real quick, like a, a pro tip. When you click on the address bar, like as if you're gonna start to, to type it, what happens is the, your GPS in the phone is actually going to know where you are and it's going to auto-populate the address like 96 out of 100 times. But you do have to be a little bit patient for that to actually go through and then actually, actually work. Like if you try to do it too quick, it's not going to show. So once you click it, it's actually looking for your location. And after I'm going to say, 20, 25 seconds, it's actually going to list off a bunch of addresses and you're able to pick the one um, that is actually your listing. So just thought I'd mention that. Yeah, that's a great call out. Jay certainly has captured uh, tons of these tours. So <laughs> he's got some great personal experience. I'm glad you shared that. Once, um, once you start to capture the, the panoramas, Really, you are just working your way room to room. Um, my encouragement is to stand right in the middle uh, to capture the panorama. If you're too close to one of the, the walls or one of the sides, um, it can just kind of create a, a, a slightly warped panorama. So usually all you need to do is, is just position yourself right in the middle of each room. 
and then make sure you hold your iPhone uh, vertically straight up and down right around shoulder height and then you're simply going to turn yourself to the right in a full 360. So if you've ever used just the panorama option on your iPhone before to capture you know a, a landscape shot you know maybe capture the sunset uh, it's pretty much the same way you can see on the screen and even Jay is kind of reenacting here on the screen here on the iPhone to the right the the app will actually guide you with these uh, gray rectangles I kind of make the joke that it's it's kind of like a Pac-Man experience it's gonna guide you to actually uh, go through all of those gray rectangles with the main viewfinder and you're essentially gobbling up those rectangles and it'll guide you in a complete circle to capture the room. Uh, as you spin around, usually it, it takes just about 30 seconds to spin around. So that's a kind of quick gauge, right? However many rooms you'd like to take of the house, you know, each one will take you about 30 seconds and so you can budget your time that way. I really like this map. And of course, I'll give this deck to Jay so he can share it out so you can look back on it. But I think this map kind of gives you a good idea of in a, your typical house, you know, where the good capture point should be. Really, as a rule of thumb, I'd say just one panorama per room. And uh, I'll quickly share two. Some of the smaller rooms, right, if there's a small bathroom right off the kitchen, um, you don't necessarily need to take a panorama of, of some of the smaller auxiliary, auxiliary rooms. We don't require any minimum number. So, you know, we give you full control. Capture the parts of the house that you'd like to. Feel free to skip some of the smaller rooms. But I'd say one panorama as a rule of thumb for each major room that you want to show. And then certainly capturing a panorama in the front yard and the backyard. Those are actually probably some of the most popular panoramas for viewers. So definitely if there's a nice backyard, a nice front yard, um, you know, make sure you don't forget those before finishing your tour. Then wanted to quickly call out some of the larger rooms. Um, you know, we as as a kind of extra encouragement, you can capture more than one pano. The kitchen is a good example. I think capturing a few different angles can be nice. So capturing a panorama right behind the sink, and then maybe capturing a panorama closer to you know the breakfast nook. Kitchen is the most popular panorama in our 3D tours. Uh, that's what our da data has shown. So if you're going to spend any extra time to capture maybe one or two more panoramas, it probably should be the kitchen. And then as you're capturing the tour, um, it'll prompt you after each, you can see it on the screen, to add an additional floor. So if there's a second, story as well as a basement. I encourage you to capture those. When it comes to stairs, you know, my tip is capture a panorama at the top and the bottom of the stairs. That way as someone navigates through the home, you know, they, they logically know where they are in the house and, you know, they start at the top of the stairs and move down to the basement and then can navigate from there. Then, just a few uh, call out here is that uh, you can preview the panos um, to see how they turn out before finishing the tour, right? So if a cat walks into the room when you're taking the pano and shows up, you can actually retake a panorama. And this is important because once you click the all panoramas complete button to finish the tour, there actually isn't an option to come back and add new rooms or redo rooms to the tour. So once you click all panoramas complete, I mean, the cake is in the oven, it's starting to bake already. So uh, make sure after you take a panorama, you can just click on that panorama on the screen. For instance, you know, here, uh, if you just took the kitchen, as you see on that iPhone screen, you could just click the kitchen, quickly see how it turned out and if it looks good, you know, continue to move on. Uh, another really important factor to call out is the last bullet point on the screen. You don't need to have Wi-Fi at the property, nor do you actually have to have cell data. You know, a lot of our users will be out in the boonies 
they don't have cell data, they don't have Wi-Fi. Uh, you only need Wi-Fi or cellular data once you're back in your home or your office to upload the tour. So you can capture the whole tour without Wi-Fi or cell data, uh, then click all panoramas complete. It'll just save as a draft onto your phone. And then when you're available, you know, in, in your next or back in cell range or back in Wi-Fi range, then you can start to upload it. Once uploaded, you can publish it to Zillow and then share it to the MLS over email and over text. So quickly, again, it'll ask you to, to finish. You can publish the tour right away, or it'll also give you an option to finish without publishing. Um, we'll kind of dive in. There are some options to, to fine tune the tour, to add any missing arrows. So a lot of folks will go ahead and finish without publishing just so they can double check their work. Once you do actually publish, Publish specifically means publishing to Zillow, right? So that's again how you would get the 3D tour to appear right on the listing page. And again, as long as you're logging in and publishing to an address, the agent's information that shows in the corner, that's feeding from who the listing agent is for the actual property. So if you have another person, maybe it's the homeowner themselves, or you have a, an assistant or a team member capture the 3D tour for you, uh, as long as you are the listing agent, the listing agent's information is what shows in the corner. Just wanted to quickly call out, uh, there is an option to use a 360 camera from a company called Rico. Uh, these cameras are completely optional, but they actually require less time. You can go faster through the house is these cameras actually don't need to spin in a circle. It's really just a point and shoot that captures the entire room all at once and then gives you a timer, right? So it's, uh, you set the timer, you can jump and, and dive behind the couch so you don't show up in the shot. But there is an option to use a 360 camera if you like, but not required. That one could include links to the camera pages so you can check those out if you're interested. So getting to that final section again um, of actually what do you do once you capture and have the tour ready? How do you share it? There's two ways to, to actually share. The first is just from the app itself. So Once the tour has uploaded, like we were mentioning, just inside of the app, there's a section at the bottom that will contain all of your tours. It's titled My 3D Tours. Uh, you can go into that and then access uh, you can Click the three little dots next to the house that you want to share, and then it'll bring up the option to then share. This specifically will prompt you on, on your phone to either email the 3D tour or text the 3D email to somebody. So again, I think being able to email or text this to clients is, is a really popular way to share the tours. So you can do that all from the app itself. Getting the MLS unbranded link that we've been alluding to, um, this would actually require you to log on to what we call the 3D dashboard. And so uh, I'll include a link to this in, in a follow-up email. If I didn't mention already, I'll, I'll give a lot of information to Jay and then he can disperse that information on those 360 cameras, as well as actually a link to this deck if you want to go through it again. Um, but there's a a login uh, that you can access from a laptop or a PC where all of your 3D tours are going to be saved as well. So your 3D tours are both saved on the app as well as you can log in to essentially a, a, an online portal. Um, and this is where you can go in and click share. And this is where you'll see this share window here on the left that gives you an option to immediately copy a link that can be submitted to the MLS. It also gives you quick links to share on social media as well. Um, I think the best way to, to kind of practice this would be to take a 3D tour just of your own house, uh, leave it unpublished, and then you can log into the 3D dashboard. Again, I'll provide the link in the follow-up email, and then you, know, you can leave this quick test tour just unpublished, but then you can kind of practice finding the link that you would use in the MLS, or practice finding uh, you know, these options to share on social media 
Um, so when it comes time to actually capture uh, your own listing, uh, you'll be ready. Another thing to quickly call out on this page as we're looking at this little share window, there's that tab, if you can see it, um, that says add users. If you do have a homeowner capture this, uh, capture a 3D tour of their own property, uh, I'd just give them a quick instruction to say, hey, uh, go ahead and add us as a user. So if they enter your email as a user, you'll gain access to the tour and you'll be able to see this same share window. So as a quick example, a homeowner could download the app, capture a tour of their own home, then they could log on to the 3D dashboard, pull up their desktop or their laptop, and then add you as a user. And then you, uh, as the agent, could then submit that tour to the MLS. You could begin sharing it online, on social media, and also access this link to again use in, in emails or over text messages. Hey, Daniel, can I ask a quick question on that? Um, yeah, there's a lot of info there. So. So please yeah, go ahead. Be before you submit and publish, can you add a user so that a different user can help with the correct placement of the arrows and things? Yes, yes, and that's a great call out. Um, you can edit and, and add users to a tour that is unpublished. Okay. Uh, I, I want to make sure I say there's no pressure to publish a tour right away. Right. Uh, I'd encourage you, right, publish that tour only when you're ready. But yes, you can instruct a homeowner to capture the tour, then add you as a user, and then you know the homeowner wouldn't need to publish that tour themselves. You know, you as an added user could publish that tour when you're ready. Right. So, so the whole idea uh, behind this is not necessarily for agents to go spend money by camera and spend your time doing it, but seeing as like we're in an environment where it's either an agent or, uh, or the seller. So what we can do um, is you can, if you're an agent, you can do it yourself or you can ask your sellers to do it. And then you can actually put us as the user and we'll go in and make sure the arrows are in the proper places and everything is looking okay so that at least you have a professional set of eyes that are looking to make sure things are tidied up. Exactly. And you know, certainly with, with how things are looking right now, it's nice to have that option, right? If it's not safe to, to go right. and visit home or maybe the homeowner doesn't feel comfortable having you know, other people including you come in, into their home, uh, right. you have a few options. So, uh, which is kind of a good segue to, to that next slide here is who can take the 3D tour. It's really anyone. So anyone will actually have the option to add an address to the 3D tour. So, and then again, add some users. So I'd encourage you, you know, pick, pick the best option for who you think should be capturing these 3D home and I will personally encourage you, the 3D home tours are pretty straightforward to capture. So, you know, asking a homeowner to capture this 3D home tour, I don't think is a big ask. And I think you should feel comfortable and confident saying, hey, you know, uh, I'm gonna send you some instructions to quickly take a 3D tour of your own home. And you know, most users are able to go through it uh, quickly and easily. Right. And, and Daniel, real quick, so on this list, it says buyer's agent. I'm wondering, I could see how a buyer's agent to protect the buyers, like may say, hey, let me go tour this home and I can, you know, explain to you. And maybe the buyer's agent goes and does a 3D tour because it didn't have one to begin with. And that's a great value add for their buyers that they're working for. However, how does that work with the whole, like you're in someone else's house, like grabbing images, you know what I mean? Like how, how is that legally? Is that okay? Yeah, great, great point. So first and foremost, you wanna make sure that you're following local rules and laws during this time. Um, I think it's good to share the option that as a, a buyer's agent, you can publish these tours um, because as, as things develop and maybe 
rules uh, start to relax, you might be able, as a buyer's agent, to, to go out, capture these tours. Um, I know Jay and I were just talking uh, before the webinar started that I, I believe the current rules, and I'm not, uh, I, I'm not an expert here, but I think the current, current rules is that listing agents and co-listing agents um, are allowed to go to properties right now. Uh, what's the latest that you've heard, Jay? Is that right? Uh, yeah, so the listing agent, anyone that is involved with the listings can be there. And obviously, once the listing is live, um, buyer's agent, as long as there's no more than two people, so buyer's agent and one buyer, um, you know, whether that's the husband or the wife or whoever, um, I believe that can go um, tour, um, assuming that they have an appointment to be able to do so. Great. Oh, that's really helpful, Jay. Um, thanks for sharing that information. Um, of course, you know different different parts of the country are are going through uh, different times right now. Um, but yeah, I've I've talked with a few agents, buyers agents specifically, that are trying to continue their relationships with buyers that they've been working with to try to find the right home. And it can be really encouraging when a buyers agent can you know tell their their clients, hey. There's a new home that just went up. I'm gonna go and visit it today and take a 3D tour that I can then share with you so you can see what it looks like too. Cool. Um, I just quickly do wanna call out our program here at Zillow. We work to train photographers on how to take these 3D tours as well. So of course, I think right now with you know what Jay was was sharing. Listing agents are going to be the the ones right now to be able to gain access to a home. But just to kind of put it on everybody's radar, if if you do use a photographer or you have an in-house photographer, um, your photographer while taking the listing photos could also take a 3D tour. And then we offer training specific to photographers to essentially share these same best practices so that. Uh, again, before they leave the house, they can take both the listing photos as well as a 3D tour. So that completes all of the content, and definitely I want to dive into uh, some questions and answers. I already saw at least one question popped up through the chat. A few common questions just to quickly kind of go over um, that we get quite a bit. There is no sound in these 3D tours. Home shoppers kind of prefer it that way since they can just navigate kind of at their own pace um, without you know music going on repeat. We are looking and, and really hoping to create an Android version as soon as we can. And as soon as I get a date or a, a, an ETA, I, I will share it with Jay so he can pass it around too. Um, all of the 3D tours do need to be captured inside of the Zillow 3D Home app. So if you are involved in the Premier Agent program, you are a Premier Agent. I know a lot of stuff is happening inside of the PA app, but if you want to capture a 3D tour, you do need to open the Zillow 3D Home app. And then uh, lastly, there is an option to use a 360 camera, but that is not required. All you need at least today, is an iPhone to get started. So as uh, Jay just typed into the chat, we'll, we'll go ahead and open up the mics. Uh, if you have a question, feel free to share. Uh, one of the questions that came in a little earlier was from Rita asking, does the 3D tour, uh, do they work on rentals on Zillow? And the answer is yes, and that's a great question. So you can use these 3D tours, you can capture them for rentals as well as traditional for sale by agent. You can also use them on new construction listings. So essentially most listings that appear on Zillow, right? Rentals, um, uh, traditional for sale, as well as new construction, all can have a 3D tour published to them. Any other questions out there? All right. Well, sounds like uh, sounds like we're all, all set here. Um, so I do want to throw out there that if you 
um, or your sellers are willing to do this and you just kind of need someone to walk through it, um, I will be more than happy to do that um, for you as well as your seller. Um, the, the goal is to be able to you know, provide as much value as possible to the end user, the sellers. Um, if they must list right now with everything that's going on, then you know, we're gonna be able to hopefully you know, provide as much resource as possible so that you can help your sellers to be able to do so. So feel free to you know, give us a call, shoot us a message. Um, we'd be more than happy to do a FaceTime, a Zoom call, and, and kind of go over this you know, with you or with your sellers more in detail. So um, yeah, and thank you, Daniel, for hopping on. Um, I know I just, you know, this was like a last minute request, but I appreciate you being flexible. And um, we will make this uh, recording available to everybody. And all the information that Daniel will share with me, I'll make sure that it's available for everyone um, to be able to see as well. So um, yeah, so with that, thank you, everyone. Um, stay safe, and uh, yeah, let's go. Uh, let's go do our thing. Thank you.